we will be sending this probe to Jewel and we will be covering everything. We will be covering the building of it, the launching of this aforementioned rocket all the way to Jewel and the interplanetary transfers and much more. So stick around, this is gonna be fun. So today we will be tackling the better signal mission together with the lens test as a bonus. Hopefully we manage to do both. Anyway, we're going to be taking the better signal. That means set up a vessel with a probe core and antenna with a minimum range of 86 gigameters around Joule. Our old good friend Dr. Ter Terry Kerman once again gets into great lengths about the coffee and the need for Joule science. And we decided to help her out, of course, by tracking the mission. And then we will be taking the lens test, which would require us to do a, an atmosphere survey from Joule. That's basically one of the new experiments that we were going to go dip into the Joule's atmosphere, hopefully not burn up and retrieve all that important science. But without further ado, let's get into the building process. Uh, trip planner, by the way, is showing me that one way trip to Joule takes 22,000 of... Um, meters of delta v which is just wrong i would really like devs that i could have check marks so i could enable and disable certain points for example i don't want to come to jewel surface that doesn't make sense jewel low orbit well yes okay speaking of that let's go we have put put in the antenna that we need the probe core batteries and we do want some side tanks electricity of course we do want four of these panels and i decided to put xenon tank and obviously the xenon drive whether or not it's gonna make sense absolutely probably not but why not because we're gonna be making this probe because it's cool yeah uh the thrust to weight is 0.02 so it's a little bit more oomph than a mouse fart However, I'm pretty sure that maybe even in the void of space, even that will be playing a role. So might as well, you know, mouse far drive engaged. However, uh, that being said, we have antennas here. We have all the experiments that we need. Um, and we're going to be saving this jewel probe. Yes. And thinking of it, this could actually fit very nicely into the fairing. Then I'm thinking we need a transfer stage. And for the transfer stage, I'm thinking I want to be using the good old chemical rockets. After all, they will be doing the most of the heavy lifting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait, this is just but ugly. Uh, nope, nope. Correction. Yep, this one. Okay. That looks much better. Now, we're going to be taking this fuel tank and then we're going to be putting some SAS units. Yes. And then we're going to be putting another fuel tank and a terrier engine. Because after all, that's our transfer stage. And it has 2.9 thousand meters per second. So don't mind if I do. Shall we be decorating it with plenty more solar panels? Because Joule is much further away from the Kerbal star or sun than all the others so that might actually make it a problem however it doesn't matter we're gonna be putting the fairing it's gonna be a 2.5 meter fairing and it's gonna be you know pretty decent all in all i'm pretty happy with it but i'm gonna be putting a much smaller tank because i feel like it's just too way too large okay this thing well this is gonna be just fine okay let's place here let's put these there there we go come on okay antenna yeah the antenna is kind of huge i would like if i could have a smaller form factor oh and i really have to change the color scheme after all we're going to jewel i'm getting rid of the mcdonald's rocket yes in the previous episode we did launch the mcdonald's craft uh, it was yellow and red and i was loving it so yeah q reference to that if you missed that video do check it out but anyway probe to jewel yes so also one thing that actually guys puzzled me is that um, people didn't know that this video is uh, as part from my other ksp2 are larger parts of the larger playlist which is basically ksp2 for science let's play so if you're missing that do check out the link in the pinned comment of this video and while you're there you might as well boop this video with a like it will help me out if you think i deserve it and also subscribe so you could see more upcoming videos Okay, with that thing being said, let us go continue the build. We did put in some lights and we did put another transfer stage which had the poodle engine. I can already hear it barking, you know. So yeah, 
So, and now it's time to put the main engines here, which will be getting this craft all the way to the orbit. And what better main engine to put than a mainsail? Yeah, because it sails nicely and it's main. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, lame jokes aside. Anyway, let's see how much oomph do we get. We get 10,000 meters per second, almost 11,000. Well, that's more than enough to get us to Joel, right? Yeah, I hear you say, okay. With that thing being said, we just need to fix some alignment issues and then we'll be launching the thing. All right, let's get into the launching meat of things. We do have this beautiful rocket and let's do the countdown. And I was about to say boosters, but I'm gonna skip that lame joke because we are running a Methalox engine here. So it's not actually an SRB. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. Anyway, the rocket is launching straight and true. This is as simple as can get. And I actually do like the simplicity of it. This time we're going some far, we're going complex, but we doesn't need to have a lot of weight. So that's something to be considered and pondered upon. So, and it's our first time that we're going to Jewel. So we're gonna be returning lots and lots of science, hopefully. Well, that's the plan anyway. So let's get into the Kerbin's uh, orbit by doing the circularization. There we go. The music is still too excited for my taste, but okay, well, it does what it does best. And let's see, we do get a 100 by 100-ish orbit. So let's point the rocket maneuver prograde and ditch the fairing and after that we will be basically lighting up that candle. We have 30 seconds. Well, while we're doing that we might as well extend, you know, the solar panels and all that jazz because we have enough. And this will be mostly completed on the poodle engine. And hear it? Okay, there it goes turning on the solar panels look how beautiful it looks and by the way devs once again one small bug um, this uh, fairing seems to be still lighting why I have no idea okay well good thing to know uh, anyway we are circularizing and everything is looking fine so far guys I haven't encountered any game breaking bugs I did find like small annoyances like this or the fact that light doesn't work but if you press F5, F9 it, it works it, and it's fixed and all in all the game is playable, I'm happy to report, I'm enjoying it very much, I hope you are enjoying it too. So okay now let's go and set Jewel as a target, yes. Typically you want to have let's say I'm, I'm going with like almost 90 degrees between Kerbin and Jewel. And then we just set up a burn and let's see, I mean, Jewel have massive sphere of influence, so technically it's not really big of a problem to get an encounter with Jewel. The harder part is to get an accurate encounter with Jewel, but encounter with Jewel, that's usually easy peasy, you know, probe squeezy. So if we just find the correct placement, we're gonna get the Jewel encounter rather soon. Yeah, there we go. I can already see it. Jewel PE. Jewel Perapsis. Now one thing that I really like about KSP2 is ability to focus on this planetary body and now I can easily fiddle and see how my encounter looks like. So this is actually one thing that I personally have experienced that KSP2 almost does better than the KSP1. However, what I am what I am still missing is plus one orbit, minus one orbit. And uh, yeah, that's some, but apparently that's something that the devs are working on. So hopefully this will get fixed at some point down in the cycle. So that's great to hear. Anyway, uh, speaking of that, now periapsis, I think I'm gonna go and come to the jewel from the other side. Okay, okay, now that looks cool. We have a periapsis around the jewel, 16,000 kilometers. I do want to do a gravity assist. So either I'm gonna do a gravity assist of lathe, tylo, or something else, hopefully, or I'm gonna do something completely different. So we will, we will see. Now the burn is 2,000 meters per second, and without further wasting our time, let us ignite that candle, and we push ourselves off on the way to jewel. There we go. For your convenience, I did hit the afterburner so that this is being performed at four times time acceleration as opposed to standard two, which are watching the episodes. So far, thank you very much, guys, for the feedback that I have received. I heard that 
this pacing is works for you and it works for me. I find it pretty engaging and fun. Things are happening, but it's not too fast, so you can't follow. So I think this is kind of a sweet spot. All right, with that being said, let's get ready for the stage and come on, stage set. There we go. And we will be going to Jewel sooner rather than later. Okay, we already have a Jewel encounter. Just It's just now a matter of burning it to get the correct encounter. Let's focus here. And it's gonna be a total of a little bit more. I would really like if this burn timer got updated with the required Delta V, that would be really massive. But okay, it is what it is. For example, this required Delta V, it would be nice if it was counting down as we burn. Because then it tells you what's the remaining Delta V rather than required Delta V. I would rename it and call it remaining Delta V. Something like that. But that's me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Does it make sense to you or do you prefer it like it is? Require Delta V. Anyway, there we go. And let's just now fix some jewel periapses. And I'm thinking something like that. Maybe get a lathe encounter. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I think we have a lathe encounter. But I'm, guys, honestly terrible with gravity assisted. This might be good or this might be bad. And uh, there we go. Bye bye, Kerbin. Our probe is in the darkness, but it will be lit up the moment we get out of the sphere of influence. And right. So, once we are in the interplanetary space, I have decided to warp closer to our jewel encounter. And there we go. We are approaching our jewel encounter. And come on. Sooner rather than later. Come on, you can do it. And there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Jewel Sphere of Influence. As you can hear, indicated by music. We do some science experiments, samples and all that jazz. And we are returning those science experiments from the orbit. Whoa, go figure. And let's see, Val Periapsis. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go straight for the Jewel's atmosphere. Let's do this. After all, we do really want to get the Jewel Atmospheric Science, and I'm gonna go for the low orbit above Jewel, so just to skim off the atmosphere, because that worked for us so well previously. Well, uh, yeah, 170-ish, I hope. I don't know what's the um, Jewel Atmosphere, um, you know, border. So I'm thinking 170 kilometers should be fine. I know that's 160 is kind of the border almost, so... And then we're gonna be doing the retrograde burn. Maybe we even do an arrow break and get ourselves captured around the Jewel Sphere of Influence. Who knows? Anyway, that being said, a total benefit would be 8,000 signs, which is massive. Oh, look at the Jewel. It's so beautiful. Jewel with a dance of its planets. Yeah, there we go. Amazing. I'm just loving it. Oh, again, I go again with McDonald's, and I'm not even a McDonald's fan. Interesting. Anyway, there we go. Ooh, that's nice. Come on, transmit 250 science points. Yes, this probe is going to give us a boatload of science and enable more core tech to get us places that we never dreamt possible. So the burn should be starting in seven minutes. We are getting close in. Let's turn on the lights. See, now they work after I did F5, F9. So devs, please fix this. And there we go. Transfer and return an atmosphere survey around Joule. We are getting close and now we are in atmosphere. I immediately press the atmospheric and let's hope that we will be able to get this. Oh, 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 okay, come on. No, the antenna was lost. Oh boy, come on, survive, please, survive. Oh, and at least we managed to get the science reward because we got into the Jules orbit. Well, I guess at least we will be returning some science home, which would be the 5000, but I don't think we will be able to get atmospheric survey. Let's see, I mean, it's still, it is still doing the thing, but I don't think it will be able to transmit because after all, our antenna got shot up it burned up into the jewels <laughs> yeah experiment completed and i have 3060 science and 6000 worth of science samples oh boy 
Oh boy. Those need to get transmitted. Oh well, I think it will need to be an improved mission. I'm gonna do it in the next episode, or so help me God. Honestly, but we're gonna be collecting this 5000 science and we're gonna be using all the tech for the next episode. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.